Hey guys, this is a rock taken from an 800 year old temple in India and it has some strange properties. When dropped in water, it does not sink like normal rocks, it floats. There are some rocks which naturally float in water like pumice, but this rock you see here is not a natural formation. In fact, this is not a rock, it is a brick made by heating a mixture of mud and other materials to a thousand degrees Celsius and was made into a lightweight block. During my recent exploration, I met two guys, Dinesh, who is an architect, and Arvin, who researches ancient sites. They explain that we use the same technology today. These blocks are called ACC or AAC blocks. AAC stands for autoclaved aerated concrete and is made by injecting foam into concrete, which makes the block lightweight. These blocks, when dropped in water, also float just like the ancient brick we saw. If we look at the Wikipedia page, it shows that AAC was invented in mid-1920s, just about 100 years ago. However, we can see that this technology was in use at least 800 years ago in India. Now, we don't know what the ancient builders used to make the bricks float, and I could not get a sample of this brick to examine the ingredients. Since we don't know how it was created, let's move on to why these bricks were created. How do you know, how, how do you know this was created on purpose though? How do you know this was not the byproduct of something very hot happening? An explosion for instance. Like how do we know for sure? I just got to throw that out there. Like, how do you know? I mean, what could possibly be the use of creating such lightweight bricks in ancient India? This brick was taken from a temple called Ramapa Temple. So I decided to go to the temple and find out why these lightweight bricks were used. You can see that this is a fabulous temple. The bottom portion is made of sandstone, which stands... Dude, look at this temple. Yo. Yo, this thing, I, I gotta give it to him. Like, I was gonna, I was gonna laugh at the word fabulous, but like, it's, it's a beautiful building. Wow. Wow, look at that, y'all. It's to a height of more than 25 feet, but there is a huge tower on top, which is completely made of these floating bricks. It has now been covered with plaster of Paris by the archeology span department. Why did ancient builders decide to create and use lightweight bricks for the tower? Why do we use AAC blocks today? Modern engineers recommend the use of lightweight blocks in buildings to make them earthquake proof. Structures built with heavy materials okay. become rigid and are less flexible when earthquake occurs. Understandable. When an earthquake happens, the building can sway horizontally or vertically and if the building is too rigid it will start cracking and begin to collapse on the other hand lightweight blocks like these floating bricks have these holes and are half the weight of regular bricks these can make the structure more flexible to the ground movement if we make a building with these floating bricks the building will swing and sway along with the ground 
and will not collapse. This is exactly why these floating bricks were used on the tower to make it earthquake proof. Now, all this sounds great in theory, but can this temple really withstand an earthquake? Let's go inside and you will be surprised. As soon as you enter, you realize that this temple was affected by a massive earthquake. Look at these sandstone blocks. They have been twisted out of place and are not at the same level at all. This is the center of the town. Let me tell y'all something about sandstone. It is freaking hard and freaking heavy. Sandstone getting twisted up like that. Like, look at this, what this, what my man's is sitting on right here. Like, he's sitting on a slab that literally got lifted up. And then there's one back here. Like, you could see where, like, the ground just got blown up. Like, it looks like a tectonic plate literally split in half underneath this freaking temple. The fact that it's still all together is pretty amazing. It's hard to understand these types of things if, if like, you're not there. But, man, we got to use our imagination and put ourselves there. Like, this, this rock has to be hard and heavy. Temple, look at the floor. These rectangular blocks at the base have popped up and are protruding on all sides. These blocks are called plimp beams and have been dislodged by an earthquake and the pillars have sunk to about 14 inches inside the ground. That's crazy. The original pillars would have stood 14 inches taller. Remember, I showed you the exterior of the temple a few minutes ago and at that time, I guarantee you that you would not have guessed that this temple was affected by a massive earthquake. This earthquake occurred on April 1st, 1843 and destroyed all the houses around the temple. But the temple, which was already 600 years old at that time, was able to withstand the earthquake. Now we can understand why the ancient builders created these floating bricks there are see this is the type of stuff that's intriguing because when you put this together with like the great pyramids right there's building techniques that are put into place like he said this was 600 years old at 1800 something right so that's like 1200 uh ad they're using these techniques to build these elaborate buildings so it goes to say, like, who who is to say that the techniques used to, to build the Great Pyramid were not shared and were not around or maybe were forbidden to be taught or something at that point? Because it just doesn't make sense how, like, structures like this, we are now 800 years past where when it was built and it's like we're we're using these techniques in our own ways it's just so interesting and intriguing that these guys can build something like this that can withstand the force to move those types of stones sandstone is freaking hard bro it's basically it's created from sand sitting on top of sand and so much weight basically starts to compress the sand into itself and it becomes stone-like. I mean, that's basically how rocks and stones are made anyway. It's from minerals pressing up against each other. But I'm just saying, like, dude, and the building's still there? Come on. Earthquake proofing technology was not just a theory. It is a fact. Right next to the main temple, there is a miniature model of the temple. And this tower is also made of floating bricks. In the last century, many people have stolen these floating rocks from the smaller tower, which is why it looks like this now. You may wonder why the bottom portion of the temple, which is made of sandstone, did not collapse. The bottom structure is designed with an extremely wide base the plinth beams were not rigidly connected, but were given gaps 
so they could pop out and save the structure when earthquake occurs. But most importantly, ancient builders employed a technique called sandbox technology. What is sandbox technology? The ancient builders dug a trench which is more than 10 feet deep and filled it with a strange mixture. Initial analysis shows that this mixture consists of powdered granite, non-centrifugal cane sugar, sand, and another unique compound which has still not been identified. The temple was erected on top of this mix. That's all I got to hear. Another substance that has not been identified. Bro, we can go on and on and on about the mysteries of all these things. What we need to stop doing, though, is letting these things slip into the past. We have to document and keep and hold tight our knowledge and wisdom of whatever it may be, of building, of spirit, of whatever the case is. We got to get it together, bro. The fact that they built this in in the past, what was it? That was in the 11th century, right? They had writing and everything available to them. And we don't know how they made it. And we talking, we looking at the pyramids, something that is, is possibly to be 11, 12,000 years old. And we think we're going to discover how that and what that's for. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying like it. We we as a we need to wake up. It doesn't look like we going like this. It looked like we was here and we going like this. That's all I'm saying. If you disagree, comment below and let me know. But I really think that the buildings of the past show that we as a people and as a species was we were just. We were more together with not only each other, but with ourselves, man. Because this, this takes... Come on, man. We ain't building nothing like this, bro. We we got ugly buildings. We got ugly buildings now, yo. I don't know. Comment below, y'all. Let me know. What do you think? Is that substance actually unidentifiable? Is, is it from somewhere else? Because if we can start unbreaking this stuff down, how these... Like structures were built, man. We're gonna get so far ahead, but I don't know. I don't want to talk your head off, y'all. I just thought it was an interesting thing to get into. Let me know. Comment below. Peace. New era. I'm feeling quite bad. So take another talk. Yeah. yeah. Let's choke us off around me. I'm feeling quite bad. So take another talk. Yeah.